Hello everyone and welcome to episode 29 of SSTO Space Program and today we will finally finish building our asteroid space station and send it to meet with the destination asteroid, a huge E-class rock. And also we will build an experimental mining ship using uh, parts from the asteroid recycling technologies mod that will help us understand how this mod works and uh, hopefully we'll learn something interesting from it. So let's jump right into it. And as you might imagine, the first two launches in this episode will be sending fuel tanks to our asteroid space station because as you probably remember from the previous episode, we finished building the space station almost entirely. We have the living cabins in place. We have the industrial, let's say, modules also in place. Our crew is also relatively in place on that station. And uh, the station is full of supplies, but what we are missing are fuel tanks. And um, we need quite a lot of Delta V to actually meet with the asteroid that I um, selected for, <laughs> for this station. Uh, because there is uh, only one E-class uh, asteroid that is relatively close to Kerbin currently. And, um, well, station is not very light either. So we needed to uh, to supply it with enough fuel to actually be able to meet with that asteroid. And uh, four orange fuel tanks was, well, just a little bit over from what we needed. And um, obviously sending uh, those tanks with our new APAS SSTO wasn't a big deal. This uh, craft was designed to actually handle this kind of uh, loads, and um, yeah, that was that was relatively easy thing to do. Also, what I wanted to mention is that um, this part of the video, uh, along with the previous part, is also available um, as a music video. If you don't like my voice, if if you prefer to watch a more epic uh, types of videos with music instead of a commentary, then then you can watch it uh, on my channel. The link is available on the screen right now. So the second launch in this episode will be sending second pair of uh, orange fuel tanks, as you might have um, guessed. And uh, it was very much similar as the first one. There was um, there is really nothing, <laughs> nothing uh, exceptional I can tell you about that, except maybe for the fact that it all went really, really well. And uh, our little B uh, orbital utility vehicle has proven to be a very effective, um, a very effective craft. In, in fact, that allowed us to uh, build that station in orbit. But where it really shined and really where we needed it to be the you know most uh, uh, efficient and <laughs> actually where the real test was uh, taking place was actually attaching those fuel tanks because those were. Uh, by far the heaviest components of that station because all of those fuel tanks were sent in full so so i had a little bit of doubt uh, actually whether we will be able to handle them with ease but well it actually exceeded my expectations so so yes i can tell you that uh, i am really happy how it turned out because this has proven to be not only a relatively uh, well-rounded station with a really useful utility vehicle that also looks cool in my opinion the station itself doesn't look really bad either and uh, yeah it was assembled without any issues whatsoever so um I'm, i don't want to say that's uh, something new but that's definitely a uh, a nice surprise because you know in uh, in ksp or actually in <laughs> real life probably as well well you can always count for so much so after assembling the station completely we um, needed to dock our orbital utility vehicle to the station itself we needed to park it so to speak so um it um so we could prepare it for uh, the departure but this vehicle apart from its many uh positive things had one major flaw is that when the legs were folded we were losing one axis of control and <laughs> that was that's one small flaw that it has so after everything was in place, I obviously compressed all the construction ports to reduce the part count on the station so we can actually handle it a little bit better and activated all the living modules and everything and all the recyclers to actually see, um, well confirm, let's just speak, because <laughs> seeing it right now it's kind of late, <laughs> how much time our Kerbals will have um, on that station and it turned out that they can stay there for um, a couple of years. So that's good and uh, supplies wise they also can stay there for quite a long time and there it is our station all ready to be sent into 
uh, orbit that will match the orbit of our asteroid. But for that we needed to wait a little bit because I I figured a, a nice trick how we can get that. So in the meantime, while we are waiting, we can as well do something more constructive. And that thing will be sending our experimental mining ship. As you can see, this ship it's slightly smaller than the, the asteroid space station, obviously, because it's an experimental ship and we will be sending it by the means of a standard SSTO rocket design that you have seen many, many times over on this channel. So, well, there is nothing I can tell you about that rocket that you don't know already. Um, I was actually thinking for a brief moment that, that we can uh, maybe send it by a regular rocket that would not be reusable, but then I figured, nah. He would hate me for that. So, as you can see, our ship is in orbit right now. Got uh, without any trouble. Um, has uh, some radiators, some solar panels to actually look. Because I wanted this ship to look like a, you know, like a real ship. And then the rocket was obviously landed. Everything went absolutely perfect. Nothing exploded. Really, there is nothing to see. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> our um, experimental mining ship. As you can see it uses a lot of modded parts and um, again our Kerbals, the or Kerbal, one lucky uh, victim, a volunteer, sorry, um, that we have chosen for this mission can stay the um, indefinitely really because he's a pilot, he has a very sturdy resistance and he has a lot of supplies as well. As for our space station, the story is quite similar. The hub time for our Kerbals is relatively extended, over 17 years. And uh, supplies-wise, they can also last for uh, quite some time, especially if you consider that um, this is only the supplies that they have. They also have fertilizers, so you can extend that period almost three times. So now it's the time where we need to send our station to... Uh, meet our station and uh, our asteroid mining ship to meet with the asteroids that we have chosen for them and the station will be meeting with an asteroid that is E-class so a really the biggest class um, asteroid available and with the asteroid recycling technologies those asteroids are quite considerably bigger than um, stock asteroids and our um, experimental mining ship that, uh, by the way, I decided to name in a very fancy way that you, you can look up on your own. Um, we'll be meeting with a C-class asteroid, slightly smaller, uh, or actually almost 10 times smaller than the E-class that we'll be meeting, but um, also in a relatively similar orbit. And uh, the thing that those two asteroids have in common is that they will be entering Kerbin's sphere of influence when where and when we will try to intercept them and this moment in time has actually arrived for our uh, smaller asteroid and the idea here is that um, we will try to exit Kerbin's sphere of influence more or less in the same spot where the asteroid will and uh, this is actually done to simplify the rendezvous process because we could obviously calculate all the orbital parameters of that asteroid and uh, you know do it as you normally do with interplanetary burns but um since those asteroids are really close and they both are entering carbon sphere of influence it, this is actually easier um doing this this more like um you know um direct way without doing any calculation whatsoever and i also figured that it could be a useful method for you to see if um, if you don't like doing all the maths and uh, you know <laughs> calculating the orbital parameters by, by, parameters by yourself then here you have a handy neat method that does not need any calculations whatsoever because then doing the um, orbital rendezvous on a very elongated or, let's say large orbit is actually pretty simple so so yeah, so we, we did that and uh, our asteroid mining ship had over 4,000 meters of delta V and we needed maybe like 1,000, 1,100 to meet with that asteroid. And here we are. And uh, this thing that you see in the front is the mining laser coming from the asteroid recycling technologies. It has a jaw and a drill incorporated all in one and it looks like it worked. We are attached to our asteroid and now all the mining operations can begin. And I was actually curious about not only how it works, how fast it mines, but also what kind of resources we can extract from that asteroid because, well, you can't really see that. And to my surprise, we <laughs> we broke the market because 
it seems like we can mine exotic minerals from an asteroid and um, if you look at this asteroid's mass we can mine <laughs> some crazy amount of those exotic minerals meaning that if we ever figure out how to bring at least part of that back to Kerbin our financial problems will never exist we'll basically destroy the market for any rare metals that's going on Kerbin pretty much like you know the um, envisioned scenario for uh, real life asteroid mining but well I'm getting ahead of myself well for the asteroid space station the story was quite similar with the only difference that um, the E-class asteroid was actually entering at a shallow angle so um, we needed to spend quite a bit more delta v to actually um, correct for the inclination changes uh, with our in our orbits and uh, that consumed almost all the uh, delta v that we had almost all of around 2400 meters per second uh, delta v that this station had but nevertheless we we've managed to meet with our asteroid without any problem and still with some fuel left so um so yeah so that was also a success and i was very happy about that as you can see the station is equipped with double claws that um, will ensure that we have a really good grip of that asteroid and i hope that <laughs> it won't turn against us <laughs> by uh you know uh, summoning the crack and and that an infamous uh, claw bug but Currently, at this very moment, we are getting ready to um, to grab that asteroid and actually get docked to it. And um, I mentioned several times in that video that um, with the asteroid recycling technologies, asteroids are slightly larger. And as you can, uh, you could see with the C-class asteroid, it was significantly heavier than Stog asteroids. This rock is just not going anywhere. I wasn't even aware remotely before. Uh, grubbing it how large it can be uh now <laughs> it's ridiculously large so this asteroid that we uh we've just uh, attached our station to is 600,000 tons heavy almost and uh you know it's impossible to move it basically like technically it's just not possible even if we mine all the fuel and use it to move that rock then the remaining mass of that asteroid is still 60,000 tons uh, it's just insane but you know it's maybe realistic so i like it i like it so as you can see we confirmed our um hub times and uh, supplies and whatnot and at this point i was actually really happy that uh, the station was equipped with some extended living modules and uh, can accommodate kerbals for quite some time because they <laughs> definitely they they can refuel and go back but but they can't count on moving that asteroid anywhere anyway thank you very much for watching i hope that you've enjoyed and if you did please consider liking this video i would also like to thank luke Joloff, and shirax and all my patrons on patreon for supporting me your guys are amazing if you are new on my channel please consider subscribing my name is mark frim and i will see you next time.